Amen and amen. And 19 days from today, we are all going to get the chance globally to bring the reality of God to our world through a practical, sacrificial, united, passionate, all-in offering. The chance to be light in a dark world through our generous giving. It's the privilege we all have. And it's going to be part of our global online Church at Home conference. I want to pray right now. Father, I thank you that nobody is in the room by accident. Nobody is logging on by accident. Lord, every person that's right now tuned in is leaning in, and it's not just their screen that's open, their heart is also wide open. Speak into the specifics of every person, to those who have struggled through this season and those who are soaring through the season, those who are somewhere in between, you love them all the same. Have your way, have your say through this word today. In Jesus' name, we pray and everyone said, Amen. Amen. What a brilliant word we had last week from Pastor Blake in Botswana about loving thy neighbor. And uh, really the last couple of messages on my heart have been around the theme of dedication. I've spoken to the pastors globally about this connect revival that I believe is about to spark and start globally. It's a house-to-house -house revival. And so many of the messages that are coming through are carrying that underpinning grace. We sing that song, I make this place a place of worship. It's not only a declaration, but it is a dedication. When we talk about dedication, I explained how to dedicate is more than a religious ceremony. To dedicate literally means four things. It means to surrender. You can't dedicate something to God and still have lordship over it. You yield it to the God to whom you dedicate it. We we surrender things to God and to dedicate not only means to yield and to surrender, it also means to steward. Sometimes we dedicate to God and we really abdicate to God and yet the privilege of responsibility is still ours, although ownership and lordship is always His. So we surrender, we steward, it also means sacrifice. To dedicate is to sacrifice. Anybody who's dedicated at anything, there's always sacrifice involved and it also finally means to be set apart. Anything or one that was dedicated to God was essentially set apart for God. And so really when we started to unpack that, that really to live lives dedicated, to dedicate our children, to dedicate our thoughts, which is what I spoke about a couple of weeks ago, about how God wants our thoughts and God really wants us to dedicate, to surrender, to steward to be sacrificial and to set apart the canvas of our imagination because it's literally the platform upon which our future is formed because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So really there's been a stirring and a, and a drawing to really, as the song says, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. In a year like 2020 where we have no idea, six months it has almost been since we've been in church services. Six months, it's 24 weeks. And, and really, when you think of that sort of duration of time, it's now more than ever that our lives and its entirety must be dedicated to God. And today, I want to speak to you about a dedicated house. A dedicated house. This is a dedicated house. Kingdom City is a dedicated house. Our church globally is a dedicated house. And it's a dedicated house because it's made up of dedicated people. Dedicated households like every one of you online right now. People who over the last 14 years, some who are with us, some who are no longer with us. They've graduated to eternity. Others have moved on to other spaces and places. But what started in a coffee shop at Starbucks in 2006 has grown by the grace of God, but also because of the dedication of many. This is not being built on the talents of one or two, but on the sacrifices of the thousands of people that continue to faithfully say, make me a vessel, make me whatever you want me to be. And we are a dedicated dedicated house because we are dedicated to God. We didn't just dedicate the journey to God. We are now in our whole process thinking, God, we surrender. This is a church that is surrendered to you. Lord, let it be stewarded for you. Let us be sacrificial in everything that we do. And Lord, let our church be set apart. Even if you just joined us in the last few months, maybe the last few weeks, maybe even through this online season, you are family and you are drafted in even though we've never had the chance to meet. And I look forward to the day when we can travel again and we visit some of the 50 
countries that our church is now in, 50 countries, a lot of them online. People are running now connect groups in some of those nations. And so I just want to say to everybody right around the world that this miracle offering, this conference at home is the evidence of the dedication that has not only gone on for the last 14 years, but that I, I believe is still going to happen in this season. And while on that day, we won't be able to meet at the Sunway Convention Center or the Capitol Theater in Singapore, or in our hubs around the world, in Botswana, and Dubai, London, Indonesia, etc. While we won't be able to meet physically, this is a dedicated house because we will be so united because the house isn't where we meet together, it is who we are together. And the scriptures have something to say about what a dedicated house really is. When you think of a dedicated house, don't think of the bricks and the stones that you're in. Don't think of the bricks and the stones of the buildings and the hubs we're in. Think of you and I, because Isaiah prophesied, thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool, where is the house that you shall build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all these things my hand is made and all these things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look. God is not looking for a brick and stone. He's looking for people. Look at what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21 says. This is a dedicated house. You are members of God's family. Together, everyone say together. Come on, wherever you are, say together. Say together, together. Not twice, just together in unison. Together, all around the world, in every time zone, together, we are His house. There you go, that's the house that we're dedicating. The togetherness of all of us around the world built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus Himself. We are carefully joined together in Him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Do you see that? Together we are His house. Together we are a holy temple. Here's what 1 Corinthians 3 says, verse 16 and 17. Don't you realize, don't you realize that all of you together, there it is again, all of us together are, we don't meet, we are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you. God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. You know, that verse should be a sober warning. And that's why I feel nervous for anybody who sows division, discord, and tries to split churches or split groups or split uh, relationships. Because when he says God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple, he's not talking about someone who puts a sledgehammer to a building. He's talking about anyone who destroys this temple, which is the togetherness of all of us. If the temple of God is all of us together, whoever destroys the together, God says He will destroy, for the God's temple is holy and you are that temple. See, there are people today in nations that have uh, congregated way outside the 10 we started in beyond Sri Lanka, which was our newest one. We have people now in Hong Kong, families, connect groups in Hong Kong, in Durban, in Johannesburg, to all our family, new friends that are gathering in Toronto and Canada, around Europe, around Asia and New Zealand. There are people gathering in all sorts of spaces and places and all of us together are the house of the Lord. See, we are a part of you, whether we've met you or not. You are a part of us, whether you've met us or not, because all of us together are the house. We are the temple. And it doesn't matter whether you're gathering in the Philippines. It doesn't matter whether you're gathering in Europe. It doesn't matter whether you're gathering in South America. When we're all together in one heart, in one accord, we are the temple. We are the house. A dedicated house is all of us together being dedicated to God and dedicated to His purposes. But not only is a dedicated house all of us together, it's house to house. It's household. Can I tell you the story of how when Israel was under the tyrannical rule of Pharaoh for over 400 years, kept, captured in slavery, God raised up Moses, a deliverer that literally through the 10 plagues had to shake loose the strong grip of the devil over his people and through uh, a miraculous journey, the cloud by day and the fire by night. He led the nation out of captivity, he goes through the wilderness and you'd think they'd be happy and be grateful and yet they complained, they, they, they were bitter, they, they, they started longing for the good old days, whatever that was. And literally after Moses died, Joshua takes up the mantle and he leads them into the promised land. And even though he's established the Torah, law, order, parameter to allow this 
group of slaves that is now a nation to function with the kind of order and administration required to, to, to govern a group of people, they start being split. They weren't all together. They weren't all together a dedicated house. And they began to fragment. And so Joshua gets the courage to address the people. And he says this in Joshua 24, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, he's not talking about all of us together because they weren't all together, but he did talk about a dedicated house at a different level. See, there's three layers of a dedicated house. This may sound familiar from what I've shared about Acts 2, that real revival happens temple, house to house, and every soul. Well, a dedicated house has all three levels. We just read how together we're the house of God, but even each household, each family, each group, that is a dedicated house. Joshua said, I can't speak for all of you, but I can speak for me and my house. All I can say is for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I wonder if there are people all around the world who right now would say, yeah, I don't know about everyone else. I don't know about the rest of the nation. I don't know about the rest of the globe, but as for me and my house, we will, we will, we will serve the Lord. Even if your kids are backslidden right now, I want you to prophesy over them. We will serve the Lord. They might not be serving right now, they might be strayed right now, but they will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, maybe you're the husband, maybe you're the wife, but rise up and be the Joshua that declares over those God has entrusted to you. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, when we talk about a dedicated house, I'm believing that God is looking for dedicated families, dedicated households. If you're saying, well, I'm single, well, you're a household waiting to happen. If you're retired, maybe your spouse has passed away in your senior years. Well, you are a legacy to households that have existed. And every one of us is part of a house. In connect groups, we're part of a house. In your own house, you're part of a house. But not only is the three layer of a dedicated house, all of us together and households, it's also each one of us individually. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says this, Don't you realize that your body is the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Temples now, all of us together, household, and just you by yourself. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. So here it is, a dedicated house, is dedicated on three levels. All of us together, dedicated. House to house, connect groups, family units, smaller groups, household, dedicated. And yet that's only possible if we have dedicated people. I believe God is looking for a dedicated church a surrendered, sacrificial, stewarded, set-apart church. I believe God is looking for dedicated households and families, families that are surrendered to God's call, families that are stewarding their life for God, families that are sacrificial towards His call, and families that are set apart. And God is looking for dedicated individuals. But can I say that when God is looking for anything, it's not because He doesn't know where it is. See, when I'm looking for my keys, it's because I don't know where it is. When God is looking for something, He's not unsure of where it is. Where it is. He, when he say, he's actually giving you and I an invitation to respond and bring of our free will the very thing He is looking for. It's His nice way of saying, I know exactly what I need and what I want, but I'm going to give people a chance to respond. When God said to Adam, where are you? He didn't say, wow, man, he's done a great job with those fig leaves. Man, these guys... Wow, where are they? He, he knew exactly what he was looking for. He was giving Adam a chance to come forward vulnerably and say, yeah, uh, it's me, I'm struggling. Please help me, I, I've messed up. And I wanna encourage you to understand that when I say God is looking for a church, He knows where we are. He's looking for a house. He knows where you are. He's looking for a person. He knows what you're going through. But He's giving you and I an invitation today to say, Father, we become a dedicated house individually, as a family and together. Do you know, when God is looking for anything or anyone, He's not looking for His own benefit. He's looking for your benefit because He's altogether sufficient. He's whole. He's 
in himself completely sufficient. Do you realize he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last? He's totally complete. It's a misconception to say God needs our praise or our worship as if he's lacking, as if his ego needs stretching. God is holy, he's just, he's perfect and he was God before us and he'll be God well after us. He's just given us the privilege of drawing us into the cosmic universe of his divine love and plan for every person on earth. And you and I get that chance to offer our lives dedicated to God. Do you realize when we praise Him as we have earlier today, it's not His chains that break because He's not in chains. It's our chains that break. When we worship Him, His presence fills our lives. Do you realize when you bring Him, when you dedicate your time, He redeems your day. When you dedicate your tithe, He redeems your finances. Whatever God is looking for, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro the earth. He's not curious, He's drawing, He's inviting you and I. And today I believe there are many all over the world that are responding to the drawing and He is saying, I'm looking for a dedicated church. I'm looking for a dedicated people. I'm looking for a dedicated follower. You know, my youngest son, Caleb, he's eight, just turned eight. And you know, when they, when they get a cookie, I'll ask for a bite. When they go to get a burger, I'll ask for a bite. And you know, that's not necessarily, uh, you know, something that you all need to do, but I do that. And in our family, we call it the tithe. So come on, give your dad the tithe. And uh, you know, it's uh, past his home, that's sort of things we do. But, but really, you can see the look of disdain on their face because in his mind, he thinks he's about to lose something. He's about to lose a portion of his cookie, a portion of his burger. He doesn't realize, even though I tell him, listen, son, if you give me this, I will give you a whole nother burger. I'll give you another set of fries. You give me three of fries, I'll give you 30 more fries. And you can see he's still, trust was a big jump. But even when I promise him this, he's still like, mm. and you know, but that's what a lot of us are like. We're like eight-year-old Caleb's because, you know, God says, listen, give. But then we're not happy with that. He says, and I'll give it back to you. 30 fries, good measure, press down. And we're still like, oh, I don't know. See, we're old in age, but immature in faith because at the end of the day, we still think when God is asking for something, He's asking for Himself. He's asking for you. He wants to get blessing to you. He wants to get blessing through you. And I want to encourage you today to start to see this whole idea of dedication as God's invitation to bless you, to prosper you, to increase you, to do all all that's in his heart towards you. That is the heart of a father. He who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder. Do you know one of the things that the Lord has put on my heart and we're gonna do this globally. In fact, it's already started. But you'll get an email in the next week or two and it'll be literally inviting you to respond yes or no as to whether you would like a pastor in your city to come and not only visit your house where appropriate and allowed, but to actually dedicate your house. I thought the Lord put on my heart that we need to dedicate houses. And in a church of over 30,000 people, there might be seven to eight, 9,000 houses. And yet our staff and our team, even if it takes us till the end of the year, even if it takes us into next year, we're believing that as we dedicate the house and dedicate the people in the house, it's not just a physical act, it's a prophetic act. It's an act of saying, God, in this season of shutdown, they can take away the convention centers, they can take away the hubs, they can take away the theaters, they can take away the auditoriums, but they cannot take away my soul and they cannot take away my affection for you. They cannot take away our house. And I want to declare over you that as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, will become a ringing cry throughout the globe. That is the heartbeat of a dedicated church. You know, when you dedicate your house to God, these things happen. Number one, protection. Protection. When the Israelites were about to leave Egypt, there was a plague so severe that God told Moses, listen, here's what you need to do. Tell every household to give a sacrifice, but dip the blood of the sacrifice on the doorpost of their house. And listen, we're not gonna do that when we come to your house, when, especially if you're renting, we're not gonna pour blood on your, on, your, on your walls. But it was a prophetic picture of the Lamb of God who was to be slain. And where the Lamb's blood is applied, no devil, no demon, no death, even death has lost its sting. Temporary death in this life is eternal life in the next one where the blood of Jesus has been applied. And we want to declare over you and your household that when you are dedicated to God, the blood of the Lamb will protect you. The spirit of death passed over Egypt and tormented every house, but it had to pass over where 
the blood was applied and that is the promise to you. I think of Rahab, the prostitute who housed two spies when Joshua sent them in to check out her, the, the wall of Jericho that was going to come crumbling down. Her house was built into the wall and she, even though she had a, uh, you know, compromising profession she was probably in her in so many ways everything that God does not want you and I to be and even then she was commended for a lie because she tried to protect the spies but God saw her empathy and a heart and the two spies said if you would just hang a scarlet cord a red rope out your window I can promise you it'll be the mark of protection around your house but it's upon you to bring your father your mother and your household into the house what's in the house will be protected when the walls come down it might feel like the walls have come down in your city it might feel like the walls have come down in our nations but where the blood is applied every house and every household will stand strong say amen if you receive the protection over your life not only will it bring protection it'll bring peace peace sometimes the enemy is not an external enemy we don't need protection from the devil outside but from the devil inside you know maybe there's tension between marriages and there's there's problems between parents and kids and, and grandparents and, and really we're believing that as we dedicate houses there won't just be protection from the outside there'll be peace on the inside sometimes we think quiet is peace quiet just means no war the presence of peace is the presence of God in your home that just brings a tangible sense of phenomenal grace that, that makes up for a thousand other things and I can promise you that when the peace of God fills your house, you will never be the same. We're declaring protection over you, peace over you. Jesus sent them out two by two and he said, when you go into a house and they welcome you, let your peace go there. Let your peace be upon it. Then we're also believing for provision. How many can say amen to provision? That Deuteronomy 28 would be your possession. You'd be blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in your coming, blessed in your going. There would be such a sense of flow and grace and provision through you and that you wouldn't be blessed so that you had enough to feel good but that you'd be so blessed you'd have enough to do good that you would actually be a conduit of God's blessing a dedicated house is a blessed house you see the, the Israelites in Egypt when the blood was applied they were protected that night they were the only houses with peace and they left with phenomenal provision they took the gold and silver and when your house is dedicated we are going to believe that there's protection there's peace there's provision and finally there's purpose I don't know what is going on in your world right now, but I do know there is a purpose that you're not supposed to drift through these weeks, drift through these months, drift through this season, but God has a purpose even for your house, where you're staying, the flat, the apartment, the CBD, the HBD, the whatever BD. In fact, if you've got a huge house, a small house, you're renting a room. It really doesn't matter. God has a plan and a purpose and that will come alive when you're dedicated. When something is dedicated, it is set apart and it literally finds its belonging. Do you realize that maybe you have a pool and you thought it was to swim, but get ready, get your pools ready because that's where people are gonna be baptized. Get your kitchen ready, that's where hospitality is gonna be given. Get your spare bedroom ready, that's where the lost will be found. So many of the miracles in Jesus' day did not happen in a synagogue. It happened in houses. It happened, if you think of the paralytic raised when the roof was broken, the centurion servant, Peter's mother-in-law, the Canaanite's demon-possessed daughter, Jairus' daughter, just to name a few. It was always in gatherings, often not in the temple. So I want to declare today that no matter what has happened over the last six months and no matter how much longer this lasts, the church is not shut. It's never been more open than it is today. Why? Because if every house is dedicated, there's a revival that is happening. I think of China and when you study what God has done there, in 1949 at the advent of communism, there was one million believers across China. Today, estimates number them over 100 million believers. 100 million believers right across China. And here's the miracle. They've not had one Sunday service in 80 years. In 70 years, since the advent of communism, they have not had one public Sunday service. And this church has grown from a million to over a hundred million. That is what a house to house revival looks like when we dedicate not just our Sundays, but our Mondays. When we dedicate not just our buildings, but every person that comes into our house. I just wanna pray right now that the dedication of your house would trigger what happened at the dedication of Solomon's temple. God's glory 
filled the temple and the priest could not even stand to minister. It starts with you and I today. It starts with our willingness to say, God, there is something stirring. In the next three weeks, God, I'm believing that it would ignite a connect revival, a house to house revival. And I'd love you right now just to stand to your feet if you're able, physically able, and just pray with me. You're going to have to contact your pastor when the email comes out, but don't wait for an email. Right now, where you're standing is holy ground. The feet that touch the tiles or the carpets under you right now. God's presence is right there. Father, we just thank you for your presence filling every home right now. Like Solomon's temple, when it was dedicated, we dedicate every house, even now, globally, online, right now in this place. Father, we pray that every person under the sound of my voice, people at old people's homes, maybe people watching just by themselves, lying in their bed, touch them even now. Be real to each one where they are at. I want to encourage you right now. I want you to pray with me. Repeat these words, but mean them in your heart. This is a prayer of dedication, giving your life to God. Dear Lord Jesus, I give you my whole heart. I'm sorry for my sin and today I choose you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior from this day on. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you that if you pray that prayer, it is not just a token utterance of a word. That's the difference between death and life, darkness and light. Tell someone about it. Be in touch with us.